Chris Carroll. Happy to have you on the platform, my man. Well, you know, it's good to be here again. Oh, uh, man, it's a pleasure to have you on the platform, my guy. But for the people that don't know you, introduce yourself to the people. Uh, Chris Carroll, I'm a retired lieutenant from Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. I was a police officer for 25 years and uh, now retired. Um, if you, you know, for those of you that haven't seen me before, I was, uh, I was the last one to talk to Tupac Shakur, uh, on the night that he was murdered. Uh, I held him as he spoke his last words. Uh, I was the first guy on the scene and, uh, you know, we've been talking about this for a couple of years now. So, uh, you know, I don't know how much, uh, detail you want out of the story, but I know we've been through it before, but, uh, t- that's, that's, that's kind of the basics of it. So I got to ask you, man, Keefe D, man, news broke yesterday that he got arrested for Tupac murder. How you feel about that? Uh, you know, I feel good about it because, you know, I, I thought something might happen because I was aware that there was a grand jury uh, that was assembled. And I and I was uh, I'm not allowed to say that when I knew that. So it was kind of one of the few times I just had no comment on anything. I was like, I don't know nothing about no grand jury. But uh, so I knew I knew the ball was rolling. So it, it wasn't a complete surprise to me uh, that he was arrested. I knew something was going to happen. Uh, I didn't know when it was going to happen. Uh, it caught me off guard. I wasn't aware of it until, uh, you know, I was at home and <laughs> with a dead cell phone. So I wasn't even aware of it until it was a couple hours old. And, uh, you know, that I, I plugged my phone in and I'm, you know, I got like 60 texts to me, you know, with everybody lighting me up. So, um, I tell you, I'm, I'm glad that it's happening. It, it's, uh, this guy has has been running his mouth, as you know, for a couple of years now. And, uh, you know, he keeps going, 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 chirping away. And, uh, you know, after being a cop for 25 years, I don't, I don't like a guy just, co- just openly going on TV and YouTube and writing a book and everything else, just fully admitting that he's a, that he's a major player, uh, in the homicide. And I don't know how long he thinks he can do that without anybody doing anything about it. But, you know, eventually, uh, you know, he put himself in a bad spot and now he's going to have to answer for it. What do you think the motivation was for the police to finally charge Keith D with Tupac murder? Because he'd been doing interviews since like 2018 and they yeah. finally cracked I, down on him. I, I, don't, I wouldn't say it was quite like, like out of nowhere he got arrested. I, I would say, you know, it takes a long time to put these things together. And uh, I, I agree, five years is, is a very long time. There's no doubt about that. But you're talking about a 27-year-old homicide case. You got to chase down a lot of leads. Uh, you know, it's a tough deal with most of the people involved in this whole thing are dead. Um, so you, you've got a lot of research to do. You've got a lot of uh, video to look at, witnesses to find, statements, you know, all of these things that the homicide detectives have been working on without people being aware of it. You know, this has been going on for a couple of years, so this isn't just, uh, you know, an overnight thing. Um, I, I think, I, I do believe that he definitely uh, didn't help his own cause, let's put it like that, you know, by by running his mouth the whole time. Um, so now he is where he's at, and it's, uh, you know, I, I think we would have all liked to see it happen sooner. Yeah. But at least, at least it's going forward. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm glad to see that, you know, we've got the police department and the DA's office are both on board and are both, uh, you know, have the courage to move forward with this. Cause I think a lot of places in the country that might not have happened, you know, we see some of these, uh, DA's and some of these police departments are pretty, pretty lax about, taking care of business. And that's, that's really not the way it has worked in Las Vegas really never has. Um, so, you know, they've been working the case the whole time and, uh, things have been happening. And, and, you know, a lot of that stuff I'm, I, am i am not even privy to at this point. Um, but you know, we're going to see what a lot of, a lot of things come out in court that probably, uh, none of us know yet. Right. Right. So Keefe D he was charged with open murder with a deadly weapon for right. the people that don't know what that means. Break it down for him. Well, he's, he's, you know, the murder is pretty self-explanatory. He's, he's charged with the murder. And the way it works in Nevada is if you, uh, you know, simply put, if, if you're a player in that murder, if you take part in it, um, it doesn't matter if you're the trigger man or not. Uh, to use an example that the DA used at the press conference, if two guys rob a bank and one is the getaway driver and the other one goes in and comes back out and the getaway driver gives him a ride, he's just as guilty as the, uh, as the guy who held the gun to the, uh, you know, the cashier and took it away, took the money. So, uh, 
you know, I think uh, obviously the DA and the, the detectives have determined that he's play he's played a significant enough role uh, to be charged with the murder, and uh, you know all the other charges. And I guess there's a gang enhancement on it, which we'll you know we'll find more about that in court. But we have laws in Nevada that if you commit certain crimes uh, it, as part of a gang activity, that it carries an additional uh, penalty with it. So, I mean, with murder, you're already looking at uh, a, a, probably a life sentence. I mean, I, I can't say for sure, but I typically that's what one would expect for a murder. So, I mean, he's he's looking at charges that will certainly, I mean, he's in his 60s. Uh, he's looking at charges that should pretty much hem him up for the rest of his life. Do you think Keefe D is going to try to fight this? I do, because uh, I, I think... It, for him to just plead guilty means he's spending life in prison. So I, I, I think he will he will try to fight it. Uh, there's always the possibility of of a plea bargain. You know, that's completely up to the DA whether they want to head down that route or not. Um, uh, I don't think they will. I think they, and, and this is, you know, a little bit of guesswork on my behalf, but it seems to me like they want to move forward with this. And uh, I don't think he's going to get any kind of sweet deal or anything like this, but we'll see what, uh, you know, we'll see what the DA comes up with. But I, I would expect at this point that there's a strong likelihood that we're going to see a trial. Wow. A trial. So you think it's going to go to trial? Uh, I do. You know, if he, if he, if he pleads not guilty and the, and the DA uh, is unable to, or chooses not to partake in any type of plea bargain i mean that's really all that's left is for this thing to go to trial do you think the trial gonna be televised uh you know what uh certainly there will be television coverage whether there are actual cameras in the courtroom or not uh i think is yet to be determined i believe that's completely up to the judge um so at this point uh i don't think anybody knows uh if there's going to be cameras in the in the courtroom well I, you know the, the, the until he's uh, until the arraignment and so forth, uh, I don't believe there's a, a, a judge that's been assigned to the case. I, I could be wrong, but I don't think that's been uh, that's going to be assigned until his arraignment, which which is coming up, which will be soon. I I suspect within the week, I would think. Well, you know, I've done a, a lot of these interviews, as you've known. And I, I talked to a lot of people in uh, uh, pop culture reporters and so forth, and and these these people follow this stuff. Uh, you know, not just this trial, but but all of this type of thing. They follow it a lot closer than I do. And pretty much all of them that I talk to, they they think when this trial, if it happens, they see it as being bigger than the OJ trial. Um, you know, this I I can't remember off the cuff there's been a murder of this you know, this level of fame. I I mean I'd have to sit down and think about it. But uh I, I can't think of one offhand, you know, where we have somebody uh, as famous as Tupac who was murdered uh probably the last time i could think of that was uh probably when john lennon was murdered in 1980 uh you know that's been quite a while that's the only one i could think of offhand that would be you know as significant as this um but that case was also a a, a pretty straightforward case there wasn't really much to discuss on that one um this one is going to be a little bit different i think there's some more you know, some more twists and turns that, that could come up, you know, we'll, we'll have to see how that plays out. But, uh, you know, the situation I think in this one is, is definitely a little bit more complex than that. Wow. Bigger than the OJ trial. You know, that's, that's what they're saying. And these are people that do this for a living every day. So I, you know, I, I think, I think if there's cameras in the courtroom or not, will will make a big difference. Cause of course, OJ had cameras in the courtroom. Um, if there are cameras in the courtroom, it, it's, it will be massive. Uh, if there aren't, it will still get daily coverage. Um, but without that, you know, being able to see what's going on inside, of course, that takes everything down a little bit uh, of a level. But we're just going to have to wait and see on that.